this afternoon and we're gonna do a little bit of night fishing. And uh, right now we got probably about 45 minutes, maybe an hour at the most before it gets dark. Now I'm using my side imaging here. I'm seeing quite a few fish laying on this rock here up in about four to six feet of water. What we're gonna do is just basically set back up here and uh, let the wind push us down. sit back here on my seat and uh, kind of be lazy, you know. Just hit left to right, power, no power, spot lock, jog, whatever you want to do. Hey, I'll tell you what, we just set up right behind us. We've got about three and a half feet of water. We're right on the edge right here. We're in about five and a half to six. It'll bounce back and forth, but the wind is blowing perfectly in there. We're gonna throw a few slip bobbers down right there, maybe pitch a few jigs for a little bit with a crawler on, but then we're gonna be switching over the crankbaits. Tell you what, everybody, certainly didn't take long. There's a nice walleye. It certainly didn't take long. You know, we're fishing out here at night and basically just working these humps. You know, when we came out, the wind was blowing out of the west, which was a perfect west, it was a perfect wind. It was only blowing to maybe about six to eight miles an hour. And it totally did a 180. We're looking at an east wind now, probably 10 to 12 miles an hour. Tell you what, here's another one. They are biting like wildfire. That's what I love about coming out here at night. You don't have the people out here. So what we're doing is we're anchored in about six foot and we're casting back into three. And what I'm doing is I'm basically just casting a rappella countdown and Scott's fishing with me tonight. Otherwise I'd have a couple slip bobbers though too. So what we're gonna do is basically just cast and what we're doing is twitch, twitch, wind, twitch, twitch, wind. And as soon as you do it, that little twitch and that little pause, that's when they crack it. One eternity later. Yeah. Hey everybody, we're back in the studio and let's break down what happened tonight. And what we're using tonight was a 7.2 medium fast Megs custom rod. You definitely want to check out these guys. They're up in the UP. They no doubt know how to build rods. Hey, what I like to do is I'm using 10 pound super braid. I like the high viz. Um, it's amazing at night when you're dealing with, you know, obviously low light conditions. Having everything right definitely makes a big difference. And last night what we were doing is we were using number seven countdown rappellas. 
um, and basically tying them direct with a pallum or not. Now what I have on here is I've got a 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader, um, again, because we're working rocks. Now let's talk a little bit too uh, about crankbaits. Now, really crankbaits, I mean, they go from A to Z. What, again, we were using last night was we are using number seven countdowns. You know, most of the water that we were casting up to was anywhere from three to four foot, but there is nights when you don't have as much wind, which makes things a lot easier when you're out in the boat, is that if I'm fishing a little deeper water, like let's say five to nine feet of water, what I will do is I'll go to a number nine countdown. Again, just kind of switching up the bait so they run a little bit deeper. And the other part is too, is that a lot of times I'm gonna change the baits, what kind of baits I'm using. You know, we're not always just casting rapellas. A lot of times we're casting the T-bone minnow, T-bone minnows. Um, again, it's got kind of a different action to it. Uh, there is nights where they want a smaller profile bait, like a Selmo. So just little things make a big difference. So when I'm putting a, a piece of worm on, and I've seen a lot of nights where this happens, where that is the key thing to catching lots of fish. Um, so what I like to do is I'll grab a crawler out of here and typically I like to use the head part. I don't want that night crawler to stretch out real far. So what I'll do is I'll take the night crawler and I'm always looking for the barb that hangs the farthest back if you guys see what I mean right here. Okay, without shaking, there you go. And so what I'll do is I'll take that barb and what I'll do is I'll take the head of the crawler and I'm telling you, this makes a huge, huge difference. Two things for using the head. It's a little bit stiffer, tougher, and when you start jerking that bait, it stays on there a lot better than using the tail part. And I'll pinch it off just so it doesn't stretch back and try to catch that back hook. The other part is too about using the head, again, is that it's, it's going to stay on there better, but it also has a lot more scent than the tail. So that, that's a huge thing. So now let's go over, since we went over what kind of line we're using, what kind of rod we're using, always use the real magic for sure, just to keep them wind knots out of there. Let's talk a little bit about what kind of structure you guys and gals need to look at if you're gonna go out and, and fish some of these spots. Basically, what I'm always looking for is the windward spots. Anything that is on that, when I pick out a reef, if it's a small reef or a big reef, I'm going to the windward side, and that means where the wind is blowing in. What happens is the fish are gonna, the most active fish are gonna stack up in front of them spots. The rougher that it is out there, the more these fish are gonna move up onto the higher spots. If it's a flat, calm night, it's not unusual that these fish will be all spread out all over the whole reef. And then that's times where I like to target smaller rock structures. You know, walleyes are lazy and they're opportunists. They want to get it as easy as they can. And at night, obviously, with the big eyes, they have a full advantage of trying to pin this bait down. So definitely breaking the structure down is a key thing. And again, very enjoyable way to fish at night like this because you don't have the pressure out there. But there is a lot of variables and a lot of things you gotta really watch out for. So you really gotta be careful too in night fishing. That's the other part you wanna look at. So, hey, I'll tell you what, thanks for joining us this week on our YouTube video. Remember, like I always say, no doubt we are still living in the greatest country in the world and it is a great day to be alive. And we'll see you next time.